So we dealt with hydrostatics. We're now dealing with hydrodynamics. And so we're not talking about water staying still anymore. We're now talking about water flow. It doesn't have to be water technically, any fluid. We're talking about fluid flow. So when we talk about fluid flow, two big types we talk about. We talk about laminar flow so versus turbulent flow. Now turbulent flow, we're never going to actually ever mathematically formally treat that in any way, shape, or form. So, but laminar flow is when we have streamlines that don't cross. So as you're looking at flow, so it's going to follow a straight line path as the fluid is flowing. And so if you've got a you know, big tube so of water flowing, let's say, so if you put a dye in there, so, and you put different colored dyes at different points down you know, the height of the tube, they would follow a straight line and those colored paths would not cross whatsoever. That is called laminar flow. Now turbulent flow, turbulent flow is what you more see you know, at the base of a waterfall. So at the base of a waterfall, you've got all sorts of you know, circular eddy currents and all sorts of flow. It is not just straight line flow going through there. So what you often find is when you're pumping water through a pipe, there's a big engineering problem, is if it flows too fast for the size of that pipe and the viscosity of that fluid, you start getting turbulent flow. So and if that happens, depending on the conditions, you might actually rupture your pipes and stuff like that. And so there's actually a fair amount that goes into uh, pipe design and things like that. Engineers take a whole class on fluids for these kind of things. So, but we're never going to deal with turbulent flow. We're only going to look at this laminar flow. So this nice straight line flow. So, and we often, all in, in conjunction with that, talk about an ideal fluid. And I think I put that on your sheet. Did I not? Ideal fluid? So, and your ideal fluid is one that does laminar flow, steady flow, no turbulence whatsoever. So it is incompressible fluid. Notice our fluid's really incompressible. Well, they compress a little, but it's a little compared to what? What compresses a lot? Ga not solids either. Gases. Gases are largely compressible. A lot of empty space in between molecules with gases, right? But liquids and solids, we usually largely view them as not very compressible at all. Well, for an ideal fluid, we say it's not compressible at all, period. No such thing, really, but they're very low in compressibility, so it's not a bad assumption. So not a bad approximation in some cases. We also say it's not viscous at all. Viscosity deals with kind of as these layers are flowing by each other, how much friction is there in between the layers. So we often think of it as how sticky a fluid is, but it's really about the friction between layers of fluid as they flow by. And a stickier fluid will have more friction between those layers. But for an ideal fluid, no viscosity whatsoever. So no viscosity, not compressible, so and laminar flow. All right. So in dealing then, everything we're going to deal with mathematically is all about laminar flow. It does not apply to turbulent flow whatsoever. That being said, again, you're not going to see a mathematical problem dealing with turbulent flow, only laminar. All right. So if we look at hydrodynamics, where are we at here? So let's say this is your hose. And water is flowing through this hose. And if I wanted to squirt water way far on the other side of my yard to hit a patch of grass that's not getting watered, what am I going to do? What's that? I'm going to put my thumb over the end of this. Why am I going to do that? More Cool. So it turns out it's less area over which it's going to flow out. So we'll see how this actually works. So instead of actually putting my thumb over it, I'm going to go get a nozzle, because that's much easier. So in this nozzle, I get essentially, let's say, it accomplishes something like this. And that's where the water actually exits the hose, let's say. So if you look, if I have one gallon of water being pumped into this hose per minute, then how much water is leaving the hose per minute? A gallon. Whatever enters the hose has to leave the hose, right, at the same rate. If a gallon of water is entering the hose every minute, then a gallon of water has to leave the hose every minute. Cool, make sense? We call that the flow rate. It's the volume per time that's going through there. But they don't usually define it as volume per time. So the way they usually define this flow rate is area times velocity. Area times velocity. 
And so we got to be real careful with our terminology here because the velocity at which water is traveling is not the same thing as flow rate. What's velocity? Anybody recall that? But I mean, what is it? What over what? You gave me the units, but what are the original variables? So, yeah, d displacement over time, displacement over time. What's area times displacement? Volume, and volume per time then. So this is the same thing as volume per time, like we said, a gallon per minute. That's volume per time. So this ultimately works out being the same thing. We just usually define it like this instead. And again, the idea is, if a gallon of water permits flowing to this hose, a gallon of water per minute must be exiting this hose. That tells us that the flow rate is constant everywhere inside this lovely hose. So in this case, the flow rate here is equal to the flow rate here. Well, again, got to be careful because you might be like, wait a minute, Chad. I know that the, the water squirting out of here is going way faster than the water is moving through the hose here. That's why we would put our thumb or get a nozzle to begin with. It'll squirt out faster and go farther. So, but again, velocity, again, is not the same as flow rate. The flow rates are the same, the one gallon per minute, but the velocities are definitely not. Which side has the smaller area? Where the nozzle is. And if it's got the smaller area, to have the same flow rate, what must be true about its velocity? Got to be way higher. And so that's the idea of flow rate being constant. We'll often say, you know, that if this is A1 and this is V1, and in here is A2 and V2, the flow rate being constant would mean that A1, V1 equals A2, V2. And so the smaller the cross-sectional area of the pipe where it's flow flowing, in this case a nozzle, the higher the velocity. Cool. Call this guy the equation of continuity and so really, it's just saying that the flow rate is equal everywhere inside that lovely pipe where the water's flowing, or whatever fluid you may have. So this only apply to ideal? So this, we're only going to treat it with an ideal fluid doing laminar flow. Notice, laminar flow again implies that we have straight line currents all the way through here. So if we got to the point where we had some turbulent flow, we'd see little circular eddy currents in various places, and then this does not apply at all. So everything mathematically that we derive, we'll get the Bernoulli equation here in a minute, only applies to laminar flow, sometimes called steady flow.